everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be starting a playthrough of Going Medieval, currently an early access game available on Steam. Um, it's developed by Foxy Voxel and published by the Irregular Corporation. Um, it was released back in June of 2021. However, uh, recent updates have, in my opinion, made this game a lot better. Uh, tons of positive reviews, very, very positive reviews all over Steam. So I figured we'd go ahead and give this a try. Um, tons of people have told me that I, you know, it's right up my alley, so I need to give it a shot. Um, so the game is described as stake your claim in this colony building sim and survive a turbulent medieval age. Construct a multi-story fortress in a land reclaimed by wilderness, defend against raids, and keep your villagers happy as their lives are shaped by the world around them. Now I have put in uh, probably about 30 hours into this game already just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, now the series that I'm going to be doing uh, for these videos is called Rise of the Dwarves. Um, I thought it would be kind of cheeky to make everybody really short, at least the starting people that I have, the three starters, um, and then build it into the side of the mountain. So try and be as underground as much as possible, which is kind of like a little forward uh, fortress for everybody to defend from. So that's what we're going to go ahead and load up. Um, so let me find it here. Um, so for the three starters, um, I went ahead and just took the first three randoms that it gave me. And the only things that I changed um, was their height, obviously, to make them all dwarves. So I made them all under four foot ten, because that's what Google told me uh, was defined as being a dwarf. Um, and then I changed their names to be kind of kind of fun. Um, so you have Linda, Carl, and Tina. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started here. A new life. The plague had ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutality, scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. So I'm getting like Black Plague vibes. That's what I'm. That's kind of what I'm feeling here. As the earth quickened in the spring of the year 1353, Linda, Carl, and Tina, classic, set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of the land as their own, as was their right in the eyes of God and under the law. Here, they may lay down the foundations of some kind of future. Perhaps hope will follow. Garl is confident, defiant even. We will make this work. We will take our share of land. We will build there, and we will defend it. Many have tried. Some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought, Yet many have also prevailed. Have faith. The place we found will stand centuries from now. Our descendants will be there still. After walking for an eternity, the pure, swift running streams and clean air of the mountain ridge stole Tina's breath away. And just beneath the surface, minerals glimmered, rich with promise. The travelers knew that this was the place they had been searching for. They decided to call it Cliffhaven. So I went with Cliffhaven just because traditionally dwarves are based off of kind of like Scottish lore. Um, so that's what I wanted to kind of focus. That and then we're playing in a mountain. So when you start up the game, you get to pick if you want to be a mountain, vill, uh, valley, or hill. I say vill. Well, that's a valley hill. Which there are some of those where they're kind of combined. Um, I also found a seed that just gave me three valleys. I thought that was very weird. Um, but I just clicked seed, 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 seed. I just kept clicking the, the random button. Um, which, f if any of you want to play along um, on the same map and with these same people, I'll uh, take some screenshots and post it up on, on our Instagram. So you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Bears and Beans Gaming. And then I'll have all the stats uh, posted up, pictures on there, so you guys can follow along. Um, or play along, I should say. So let's start off by pausing. Settlers are idle, no shit. Um, let's just go ahead and allow everything. All of this is now theirs. They can do whatever they want with it. Let's just allow everything. You can take that. There's a, there's a little hand. There's some stuff up here, stuff up here. Okay, that should be good. That way, if they come across anything out and about, they can just take it. All right. So now, let's find somewhere 
similar to setup shop. Um, ooh, this mountain's looking pretty nice. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is a boundary. So I'll show you. So you can see this red zone. Um, it borders the entire edge of the map, um, which I did a large map. Um, but this, you can't build, you can't dig, you can't do anything in this zone, because this is the spawn zone. So this is where raiders or future villagers, travelers, merchants, whoever, this is where they're going to spawn. Wildlife spawns here and works their way in. Um, so you got to be kind of kind of wary and you know think ahead of on that. It's a nice little green area down here, but it's very... Pretty hilly, lots of, you know, this might be a mine. So one of the technologies you can get is terraforming, where you can take like the dirt. So it says there's three dirt here. Um, you can take five pieces of dirt and make a new square. So you could theoretically, after you mine out all of this, limestone and salts and whatnot, you can go back in and fill it with dirt. And then now you have proper crop, you know, uh, farmland so to speak and i'm kind of digging this it's very it's like shallow but not too shallow i think we might we might do that you know there's like a little islandy thing going on over here yeah we've got a nice deep so we can make a trough that's essentially that's kind of the the bread and butter of the design i have in my head is i want to make like a kill box kill zone to where it's kind of like an afk base we can just set it up with traps and you know, raiders are coming in. Settlers can be, you know, up on top. And these, like, little gallo things shooting down with their bows. And then between the traps and then the bow and arrow settlers. You know, the raiders and attackers and whoever, bandits, just won't stand a chance. It'll just get more and more lethal. But we gotta do it quickly. Alright, oh, there's a carcass over here. Two carcasses. So those are, that's very important. The map just gifted us our first two big slabs of beef. Yeah, I'm thinking right here. This is looking uh, this is looking pretty fresh. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get all these trees out of the way. Oh, that's a lot of trees. But yeah, just take it. And then we'll come down here to this spot. So the thing about being in a mountain area is it tells you in the description that this farm, this green farmland is very scarce. So I don't want to build on it if I can help it. So let's go ahead and throw down a giant stockpile. All right, and then while, while they're moving everything over and chopping up, let's go ahead and set the schedule. So let's say, you're working from 9 to 11, or 8 to noonish, basically. We'll give them two hours off to do anything, and then work them all the way to, let's say, 6. And give them two hours off for anything. Yeah, let's work. There you go. Five, shift, and then they can go to bed. I'll give them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours of sleep. Okay. Well, let's get them up working a little bit earlier. Okay, so there. That's a nice little work schedule. I'll go right there. Give them, we'll give them a, a nice little hour break in the middle so they can grab food, change of clothes, whatever. That's At least in my mind, that's how I see it. That's their hour break. And then they work two five-hour shifts. Some time off, plenty of sleep, plenty of leisure. You know, we're going to... You can get away with kind of overworking them a little bit at the beginning. Uh, this, the game's a little bit forgiving because they instantly come, you know, really, really happy. But one thing you'll need to pay attention to is on their mood right here um, and then when they get these boosts so right now they're super happy super optimistic they are entertains they are feeling you know religious vibes they have great you know well they have expectations high expectations it's positive right so and they're well rested you know their mood is pretty neutral they're not hungry so they're ready to go they're ready to get some stuff done so we're going to take advantage of that all right jobs all right, I always like to set this Kavales, uh Stewart, oh, and Hall to one. That way their top priority is always going to be lying themselves down if they're injured or restoking a fire to make sure that the house stays warm or to get everything hauled over into 
um, the stockpile to make sure it's all preserved, you know, because that's going to be a big thing later on is when we build a cellar, we want to make sure that all the food gets down there so that way it doesn't get wasted because um, stuff does decay. Um, so, if, like, for instance, if I show you... So here's some simple medicine. tells you right here, decomposes in 20 days, which that's, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, but it ends up being a lot. Uh, but then, like here you have some ale. Um, it's, well, it's a pile, so it's not really giving you stats. But like you have some packaged meals, 41 days again. But that's because they're on the ground and they're exposed to the atmosphere. You get them on to like some stone or wood flooring, and then you put them at least one or two layers underground. Especially um, if you can get the indoor temperature of where it's stored to be around the same temperature as what water freezes at. So either 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, then your stuff will basically be infinite. It'll be eternal. <laughs> um, oh, so we've got some cabbage. All right, so we're going to go ahead and expedite hauling for right now. So that way they just get everything over there. Um, now let's go to manage real quick. So Carl, so melee. So he's going to be our, our melee bro. So we'll go ahead and give him one-handed, we'll give him shields, we'll give him helmets, we'll have him wear armor. Um, we want to switch this to meals, so then that way, once I build my first, because one of the first things I'm going to build is a campfire and a butcher station. Uh, that way then they will eat the meals They will that are prepared, they won't eat all the raw ingredients, because um, that's unfortunate. So Linda is a marksman. Tina is a marksman. Alright, so they'll both get ranged. Which means no shields. And then for headgear, they will have caps. Just a little something. They don't need armor. Okay, so the stimulants, that's, that's all good to go. So just to kind of start things off, we'll have him put on the armor. Who's the... I believe Tina is the better marksman. 15 with a 1 star and 12 with a 1 star. Okay. So Tina will get the longbow. And Linda will get the short bow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it moving here. So Carl... Oh, yep, see, now they go. They're already grabbing stuff. Taking it over. Sweet. And it's not too far, luckily. I mean, it's just here. Looks like they have to go down. Looks like they stay on that side. They come up a ramp, or they can come on this inside, and they'll go up that same ramp. Okay. All right, so I don't feel too bad. So. Then, let's go ahead and get things started. Let's start looking at jobs. All right, so she's going to be our medicine woman. You know, let's just have all of them because they have some kind of skill. All right, so 15. So she will be a hunter. He will not. She will do it as a backup. So he will be our constructor. Um, she will not. She can do it as a backup. All right, so she's going to be our grower, our harvester. All right, so Linda's going to be our, our gardener. Uh, they will not touch that stuff at all. Maybe... Maybe we'll do cut. Cut plants. That way they'll help chop down the trees. Now, animal husbandry. So taking care of our little sheepies. Let's see. Animal handling is five. But, all right, so they suck. So we'll set that as a two, because we want her primary to be the hunting. Um, mining, she sucks. Mining, she sucks. All right, he's a boss at mining. Cutting plants. Okay, so she's going to be our cook. Crafting, we want all of them to be doing that. Smithing, she sucks. She sucks. Sorry, ladies. No hardcore craftsmanship here. Carpentry, carpentry. All right, so she sucks. She'll do it as a backup. He'll do it as a backup. Same as smithing. Five, five. All right, so they all suck. 
She'll do as a backup. Okay, but here's her other primary. She's going to be our researcher. And she'll be an artist. She likes animals. Because um, if I remember, she has a special... Yep. So she's wise. She's got that big brain. And then... She's got the, the boost to animal. Cold hardy. That's random. I don't remember seeing that one earlier. Alright. We'll set this to four for them. Because we do want to get research. No, I'll bump it up three. We do want to get some research going. All right, so we at least have a primary in each one. Um, I know it's a little scarce right now. Because I'm kind of building towards long game. So let's keep it. Um, and the other thing I want to try and do through this playthrough is pause as little as possible. Right, so I don't want it to... Uh, I don't want it to completely take over. Oh, there she goes. Hacking that tree. Hacking, hacking. I love the sound effects. I can just imagine in a sound booth for this game. They're like, all right, we need something for chopping a tree. And a dude literally just took a drumstick and just started smacking a block of wood. They're like, how about this? Crack, crack, crack. Right? It's fun. Okay, so we want to build we need some kind of little hut. Something just for them to live in. So we'll go this. Alright, so let's come up. Two, wall, two, wall, two, wall. So we'll come out through here. He's just going to keep whacking that down. Get some doors. And then floors. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Kanto. Doors! Floors! Um, and you'll notice I didn't put any windows. Um, because one thing is that windows actually affect the temperature. As you can see, thermal. They affect the temperature of the room. Um, so if you're in an area, like a valley or something, where it's going to be a little bit warmer, uh, but because we're up in the mountains, we are not going to um, want to have windows. I'm going to want to keep it insulated. So we'll go ahead and just grab a thatch roof. No, we're going to want to save our thatch, so let's go wooden roof. Alright, there we go. Have a nice roof. Let's go ahead and turn the roof off so we can see. Actually, we're going to cancel these trees because they're weird floaters. So we'll just mine all that out. So as he's done building. See? So Tina's going to be spending all her time just hauling everything back and forth. Poor thing. But then you've got Linda chopping trees like a boss. I can hear her just whacking away. And then Carl's over here throwing up their first homestead. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get some sleeping spots. from the door. See, and then this will give them a boost because they'll each have their own quarters and they prefer that. They prefer to have their own sleeping chamber by themselves. Um, you can put a roommate and they will still get a little bit of a boost but not nearly as much. down here, 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 so that way if we need to add a roommate, 
and the roommate can go next to them. So that should be nice. Alright, what else do we got? Uh, where'd she go? Where, where are you chopping at, Linda? Oh, please don't tell me you're stuck somewhere. Yeah, that's the other thing with the mountains that I learned through my first couple playthroughs. You gotta make sure there's plenty of ramps and passages for them to get around. Oh, there she is. Yeah, so she had to go all the way around over to these ramps. <laughs> yeah, you gotta make sure they don't get stuck somewhere. Because they, they will. And they'll be totally stupid about it. Okay, Carl, you come. Prioritize hauling this. And Tina. Let's see, let's get her. Prioritize hauling this. We wanna grab these carcasses. Carcai? Carcasses? 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 Carcai? Sure. We want to grab. We want to grab these dead deer. Deers is deer. Deers deer eye. All right. Then we want to harvest up this hay. Straw, whatever you want to call it. That'll help feed the. Feed the sheepies. So we gotta make a sheep pen. That's gonna be our next. So we don't want those guys to die. Oh, come on, where is it? Oh, here it is. Wicker fence. Yeah, so let's just say, uh, let's just go here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We'll go two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This one can be a corner. This one can be a corner. This one will be a corner. Yep, you gotta, you gotta get your aesthetics. And this one will be a corner. Rotate it around. Okay. And then we will put in a gate. Say, right there, that looks good. Okay. And then we can put in a trough. Like there. And then make this a pen. Right there. And then we only have the two sheep, that's why I just made it really small. Um, obviously later is, you know, we'll get more animals. We'll have a nice big outdoor farm and animal area. Because um, kind of what I'm seeing here is that this upper area that we're building on right now kind of has like a natural island here and here. So what we could do is just mine out this area across here. Which actually I might just go ahead and do that right now. Just get him to, get him to mine all this out. three strip because um, what I can always do is build bridges later if I need to get across uh, but then it'll stop raiders who spawn somewhere down in here and come down to that level from going across I'll make them go around that way or go around that way and then I can have this top island which then I'll go through and I'll terraform it to be a nice piece of green dirt we've got some herbs down here go ahead and grab those some herbs up here. Let's grab that. Okay. Now production. We want that butcher table. Let's throw that down. And we want that campfire. Hey Carl, he's a building machine. Get it, Carl. So the way that the jobs work is obviously priority one is done first, priority five is done last. That's pretty self-explanatory, but they work left to right. Um, so the very first thing they'll do out of any job is they'll tend to a wounded person. And if that's doesn't need to be done, then they'll lay themselves down if they're injured, which is good. If that doesn't need to be done, then whoever the priority for the hunt, she'll do that first. So Tina, but be, there's a reason she's not hunting, because you're probably thinking, why isn't she hunting? You know, because she's skipping. There's nothing to craft right now, so she's not doing that. So there's nothing to research. So she's going straight over here to Hall. The reason is because you have to come here to Overview and go to Wildlife. And you have to mark which ones you want hunted and which ones you want domesticated. Because um, as you can see, there's wild goats. Um, later on, there'll be random like wild cattle. 
Um, you can even... You can tame the wolves, technically, and then they become dogs. But... Which they can help with protection. Um, you can have... I've seen videos where people had, like, a wolf pit. So they forced all of the raiders into, like, a basically a kill box that was just filled with wolves. <laughs> Which, that could be... That could be a little intense. Alright, stockpile is low. Carl. Bro, build this shit. Yeah, go get resources. Come on, I know you're over there building that house. You're, you're doing a fantastic job, my friend, but... Come on, Carl. Get, get the house. Or, I mean, get the, uh, get the fire so we can get... This is, this is a, oh, the rat carcass. What? It's a dead rat. Now, sometimes when you spawn, you will spawn with a cat or a dog, which those are great, if you, especially if you have a cat, if you can get a hold of a cat. Um, because a lot of times you'll get these rats um, that will come and they'll eat your food. Same with like uh, some of the, I think they're called pull cats. They basically look like, like a ferret weasel looking thing. Um, they will also, let's just do this forever, make all that food. Um, they will also try and come and eat your food stores. So that's why it's good to put them underground. But then if you have a cat, and it, stuff does happen to be stored up here, so you can see there's all these rat carcasses, um, then they will... Oh, bro, where are you going? Where are you going? Where is, where is Carl going? Dude. Getting resources for construction. Oh, okay. I haven't mined any limestone yet, so he's coming over here to get some of the raw stuff so he can build those braziers. Bra 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 braziers? Braziers? Bra bra uh, I don't know. The, the big fire stone pits that are in the building to keep the rooms warm. Because again, one of my first playthroughs, all of my people died. <laughs> I had up to like six villagers at one point, and I was so happy... Everything was thriving, and then winter came, and all my people died because they either starved or they froze. Because I didn't think ahead. But again, I was still trying to figure out the game. I was still doing the tutorial. But I learned my lesson. You gotta build something as simple as just a little fire pit in the bedroom early on. Keep your people alive. Alright, come on, Carl. Linda just hacking away. Oh yeah, we do have a cat right there, Maxi. Little, little our little, our little Maxi. <laughs> Was it a female, female cat? So Linda just fell asleep in the doorway. And so did Carl. But at least he's by the fire. So apparently if their beds aren't ready, they just fall asleep in the doorway. Alright, lovely. And, alright, she's asleep in a pile of hay. Oh, my oi. Alright, so we'll go ahead and here and wait for... Yep, auto saves. Which, be careful when it auto saves. Um, if you're trying to be in the middle of doing something, and it'll randomly try and auto save, it'll shoot you across the map. Um, that's one thing, and I've I've sent in a bug report to them about it a couple times. Um, that it, like if you're moving like this, and then it auto saves, it'll just like, boom, pop you up all over here. It's crazy. All right, come on, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Everybody sleeping. We're gonna have Carl. Oh, see, he's well he's well rested. Wake your ass up. I'm gonna have him prioritize the butcher table. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're well rested, dude. You're not hungry. Your schedule says that you need to be sleeping, but I'm gonna have you working. I'm gonna get you up extra early. Come on, come on, Carl. Do your job, Carl. Table is the other thing that we really need to 
slap down if we can. Let's put there. A lot of this is going to get moved. Um, so don't worry, my friends. We will get everything underground as we intended. So there you go. Forever hack up that meat. Make up that stew. Oh, there she goes. She's clearing it out for the... You're right, because that's a, that's a hazard. Look at that. The tree goes into my roof line. My insurance company would not be happy with that. Got them both. Dang, Linda is a machine. And then Tina just running around picking up all the mess. Love it. Oh, there was. Oh, yeah, here they are. So another, another good thing to do. Oh, I don't have it yet. When you get agriculture, you find these wild bushes. You put them as a as like a farm plot. But then you mark the don't sow, and then they'll just let them naturally grow. And then whenever they're ready, the guy, the villagers, guys and gals, will automatically go and clean them up for you. Or, I wouldn't say clean them up, but dig them up, harvest them. Did we get every? She still, she is still. Oh yeah, there's still stuff over here. Tons of wood. Look at that. Two hundred, two hundred. Box of mechanical parts. You know, let's get him. I know he's busy. She's already hauling and he's harvesting. So let's let her harvest. But he's gonna get those mechanical parts. I don't wanna lose those. Linda's over here picking berries. What's Tina doing? Hauling to stockpile. Linda's now. Okay, she's gonna go pick up all those berries. Good, good for her. This, this homie over here. Yep, there you go, Carl. Come on, Carl. Get your shit together, Carl. Alright, there's Tina. Tina, Tina, Tina. What are you doing now, girl? We're just gathering everything all up. You know, here, gather up all these sticks. Grab those, grab those, there you go. Grab those, we need plenty in the stockpile. Because now that we have that first fire going. I think we got a couple. Oh yeah, we got two of them going. We're gonna need lots of, lots of sticks. Right there, he's building number three. Okay. So, let's see, what is he going for now? Getting resources for construction, but for what? I want him to prioritize those beds. Still got the whole floor over here to do. Okay, so he's finishing off the roof. That's good. Bro, you're stuck in the table. You're stuck in a table. What are you... What was, what was that? He was stuck in the table. There you go build up that roof. Boom. Oh yeah, I see him grabbing hay. So that means he's going for a bed now. Alright, here we go. Come on, Carl, you're the man. Look at him. He's our little machine. He's our little building machine. Look at that. Boom, chamber. That's a good thing. Oh, not enough beds, really? Really not enough? I think Carl knows what he's doing, guys. Oh, there you go. It went away. Thank you. I'm pretty sure... Oh, there you go. Lay that floor down. Look at him. He's just so happy. He's like, look at all my hard work. I am supplying this village. Dude is a champ. Oh, no. He's, oh, he's not happy no more. What made him happy? Or unhappy? Oh, they do need, um, that reminds me, they do need religious activities. 
So let's go ahead and throw down the two shrines. And they're going to need something to do because they're going to get super bored. And then that's all we're going to hear about is how bored they are. Uh, let's just put a little backgammon table out there. They go sit under the tree. Alright. Alright, so we got our lazy cat sleeping in the bedroom. We got our sheeps. Let's see, he's finishing up. He's building, he's building the shrine through the wall. Now that is the pro level builder that Carl is. He doesn't even need to see, he just reaches blindly through the wall and is like, I got this. I got this. So now, well he's doing those last few things because he's got to build those last wall piece so that the building will be done and then he'll start on the pin and all that. Where, where's my main lady? Where are you, Linda? Linda! Linda! Oh, she revealed some herbs. Nice. Oh, looks like Tina's taking a little snack break. Yep, yeah, she's eating a meal. Yeah, they're thumbs upping each other. He's like, I just built a thing, and she's like, I just ate some food. Yes! We're so happy, look at us, we're productive. And they're like, yeah, we're thumbs upping. I just chopped a tree, and he's like, I'm drinking some ale. <laughs> but I get the feeling that Carl's gonna be a drunk. So actually that brings me to another good point. Um, they get thirsty, but not thirsty for water. They get thirsty for ales and spirits and meads all of those delicious medieval drinks because back in the day water was disgusting they didn't know how to purify it yet and well water was still pretty nasty you know, that's what you gave to the livestock or to the fields so the only safe thing to really drink was fermented drinks so one thing that we're going to have to do is when the first trader comes around we're going to have to make sure that we buy plenty of seeds for, you know, barley or wheat or whatever. So we can get that growing so we can have a good harvest to make sure that we have plenty to ferment through the winter to keep everybody well hydrated, shall we say. <laughs> Ooh, there you go, building the backgammon. He needs to build... Dude, just finish this damn wood wall. Need to clear the sticks first. Really, there's sticks on them. All right. So there's a lot to do. do this. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab Carl. Sorry, I hate to do this to you, buddy. Grab those sticks. Yep, grab all those other good guys. Good, that's the oh, that's the way to do, guy. All those stick. Here now, I'll prioritize the wood wall. Just finish off the houses already. Like, come on, my dude. Ah, chamber. There we go. All right, we got three chambers for our three peoples. And this kind of long style that I have built, we can either build another building back here. Maybe move this out of the way, build another room off this side. We can move that, move, you know, so on and so forth. But I'm hoping that we can go ahead and start mining into this and get some of that underground action going on. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be worth it. So we'll go ahead and take maybe this first row right here. We'll leave that little stub. So I have it kind of in my head is we're going to have like a giant hall entryway with two kind of keeps and the keeps will have little wall pieces that'll go back. And then this side is a little bit more, you know, forward. So that'll be kind of the cutoff 
and then that's where we'll start building the death zone down here and then as this spot curves around i'll go ahead and make this um you know clear out some little spots to put in some workshops or maybe some gardens or eventually we're obviously we're gonna have to have a cemetery i hate to admit that but you know maybe we'll have some something like that or maybe we'll come down over here into one of these other mountains and we'll build a cool you know like burial site that's kind of a way because unfortunately when raiders or even when our own villagers die their bodies are just left there to the to the elements and our people will actually get a negative um negative mood if they have to walk by a dead body every day on their way to their job site so that is not not as something that they do not want to have to worry about yeah, carl you are a machine just do that forever all right which means we have research now which means that we can unlock architecture and agriculture right out the gate the two that you always want to do uh, because now you get this wood beam which then later you can get the limestone beam uh, which helps with support building support especially since we're going to be building underground we are going to need that but the big thing here is that we're going to want to build berries so let's go ahead and expand the zone there take up all that space put some berry bushes in right there we'll put in some how many how many more can we fit in the, over here don't throw me okay so i can get a few in there one more like that okay so we got some berry bushes growing over here so it's good and then herbs we're gonna want to throw down some herbs um so you know what let's take out both of those put a little tiny little herb spot right there and then the same thing let's go ahead and clear this all out and we will throw down some Ooh, there's a nice big spot over here throw down some cabbage so let's just keep expanding the zone There, leave a nice little walking area. I don't want people to get too too close to the cabbage grow space. Alright. All right, there we go. That's a lot of cabbage. So it'll be <laughs> it'll be like Charlie Bucket and his family just eating tons of cabbage. Alright, so this field is gonna be very high priority. Um, same with this field. Same with this field. We want this all very high priority. So we got our botanist girl. She'll do that first thing in the morning. This pen. We'll put our sheepies in it. Who is our animal person? Let's see. Five, five. All right, Tina. That's what you get to do. You get to take this guy and rope him. All right. Get him into that pen. Ba Boom. And then she'll go back to doing some research. Where's the other one? Oh, here it is. So let's go ahead and prioritize roping. Ah, good, Linda. There you go. Growing up those crops. Oh, Carl's built everything. So everything's built. So now he's just going to go straight into digging. So that's going to be good. Good, good, good. So we got ourselves a, a fairly easy start. A little, a little rough around the edges. Yeah, definitely have some some challenges that we're going to have to tackle, but I know once we can push through and s sort of start digging into the mountain, that it's really going to be worth it. Um, at least I feel it will be. All right, so everybody's going to bed. All right, so that's the end of day two. Uh, yeah, 
Carl taking that top room. You got Tina, Linda. You know, for being the plant and the animal lady. Linda does strike me as being the one that would have the cat in her room. So that is ironic. All right, so I'll go ahead and pause it here. Um, this will be where we end the first episode. So thank you all for joining me as our journey begins through the rise of dwarves um, here on Going Medieval. So uh, tune in for the next exciting episode. Um, hopefully on this next one, what I'm going to look to do is to open this gully up, up more, protect ourselves on this backside, and then go ahead and start digging into the mountain um, with our first thing being a cellar so we can start moving all of our food in, get everything, all of our stockpiles moved in and stored properly, and then just slowly building up from there, you know, working on defenses. Um because even though we're not playing on the hardest difficulty and playing on just, you know, average, standard, um, we still need to be wary. Because um, this game is pretty unforgiving if you let it be, if you're not paying attention. So we're going to let every moment go by nice and slow so we can focus. So uh, I look forward to the next episode. Look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, go ahead, as always, try to drop a like, comment, subscribe. Definitely smash that subscribe button. Um, it helps me out. I am eternally grateful just to be able to sit here and play with you guys and hang out. Um, and then, as always, you can catch me on Instagram at Baron Beans Gaming. Um, I also have a Patreon if you want to head over there and show some support. And then, hopefully, here pretty soon, we're going to start our first merch drop. So that'll be fun as well. Um, I'll give more details as that gets closer. Uh, but thank you all again, and uh, see you all in the next one.